In this video, I'll show you 10 shortcuts that will help make your Roll20 games run smoother. So on the left side of my screen I have my GM view, on the right side of the screen I have one of my players logged in. So the first shortcut I'm going to show you is Control L, and Control L allows you to effectively look through your players eyes and see all of the dynamic lighting and whatnot that they see. So you can easily tell does this player have line of sight to a particular object or creature uh, just as they would see it uh, on the map. The next thing I'm going to show you is the shift ping or shift click. So let's say that my players have rolled a perception check to notice a creature splashing around in this underground lake. But you notice the player hasn't seen that on their map because they're not scrolled down far enough. So what I can do is hold down the shift key and then hold down the left mouse button to do a shift ping. And you can see that drags my player's focus down automatically to that part of the map. So you can pull your player's focus to any part of the map that you want to by doing a shift ping. The one thing to know about this though is this will only work if you're on the map layer or the token layer. So if you do a shift ping when you're on say the GM layer, your screen will get centered on that point but the players will not. So you do need to uh, have things on the map or the token layer in order for the shift ping to work. Now the next shortcut I want to show you is shift Z. Shift Z is nice because it allows you to show a zoomed view of a particular item on the screen. So in this case I've shown this monster. But another way that you can use this with great effect is with sort of mood shot tokens. So my players as you can see here are in this underground grotto. So what I've done is I've placed an image of an underground grotto here on the GM layer and I'm just going to shift Z that. And now it gives my players this kind of nice mood perspective of what it looks like under there uh, in that grotto. So I don't need to create a handout or anything for this. I just put that image right on the GM layer and then I shift Z to reveal that to my players. So these next couple of tricks deal with character sheets. So if you click on a given token and then hold down the shift key while you double click on it, that will open the character sheet to the bio and info tab where you can look through and see information about that particular character or monster or what have you. If you hold down Alt and double click on the token, it opens up to the character sheet tab itself. Now, while you're in here, you can click on a monster's name in order to roll initiative for it. And then finally, you can minimize a character sheet by double clicking in the title area here and you can see that puts the character sheet into this minimized form still tucked away kind of transparent so if you as the GM have multiple monsters that you're trying to run you can leave their sheets up but just minimized like this and then to restore them just double click again. These next two tricks have to do with movement so I'm gonna click on my monsters token here and I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and start to, to move them a little bit. Now as I start to move them I'm going to press the Q key on my keyboard. I'm just going to press it and you'll notice that when I've pressed it this little marker has popped up now and it's tracking how far I've moved. So I can see how much distance I've covered as I move the token. Now if I can't move in a straight line, if I have to jog around something, I can click the right mouse button and that sets a waypoint so that I can keep moving along still tracking my movement and then uh, finish my movement out. So I'm holding the left mouse button down as I do this whole thing. So you keep the left mouse button held down as you're dragging the token, you press Q to start the tracking, right click in order to set the waypoints so that you can change direction. Now I'm going to release the left mouse button in a second and when I do I want you to watch the right hand side of my screen because that's what my player is going to see when the token starts moving. So you can see that it sent the token along that path and my player was able to see exactly how far it had moved. Another handy trick related to movement is if you can't remember how much movement you've taken so far, you can press the X key 
And that shows you the last movement action that that particular token took. And that will work for any token that you can control. So as the GM, you can do this for every token on the board. Um, your players will only be able to do it for themselves. But this is a really great way if you can't remember how far somebody moved or you can't remember the exact path that they took. Maybe you want to make sure they didn't step on a pressure plate to set off a trap or something like that. Uh, you can be sure to know exactly how they moved by pressing X. All right, so the last thing that I want to show you regarding uh, quick tricks is a way to zoom the map in and out really fast. Um, you're probably familiar with using this little slider bar right here to zoom in, zoom out. Um, but if you're working down here on the map, you may not want to have to swing all the way up. If you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then scroll in your mouse wheel, you see we can zoom in and out. And so that's just a really handy way to be able to navigate and zoom around the screen really quick. Okay, bonus tip. Uh, sometimes, if we look at our character sheet here for our monster, sometimes you've got these really great pictures that you want to share with your players. You know, the token is awesome, but it only shows from the waist up. And your players might be wondering, well, this monster came out of the water. Does it have legs? Does it have a fishtail? You know, something else. Uh, you want to show them this whole picture. But if you click show to players, then that's going to show them everything on this page. And that's probably more information than you want to share with them. So what you can do is display just this image using the macro that I'm going to put down in the description. So what we'll do is right click on the picture, say copy image address, and then I'm going to run my image macro, which prompts me to paste in the URL of that image, and then submit. And there we go. Now the image has been displayed in the chat. It's the complete image. My players can see it. You know, and again, this is what my players see. So there it is. There's the are the monster that they're fighting. So let's take a look at the code for this macro real quick. Basically all this is doing is taking the URL, the question mark and the curly braces URL, that's prompting the user to paste in the URL. And then this pound.ping part is taking care of any image that doesn't end in a .jpg or .png. So I'm just going to paste in the URL to that image that I, I put in. You'll notice that this just ends with a number. It doesn't have a .png or a .jpg or anything like that. So this little bit, the pound.png, is taking care of that. So basically what that's saying is if this doesn't end in a uh, an image type file extension, we're going to append this so that it does and then it will display properly. All right, so hopefully you found these tips and tricks helpful. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.